What's up everybody? Christian Ballard here with Ballard Sports Media coming at you with the first official college football preview video that I am doing. First up today, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Alright, so going into the 2020 season, Alabama coming off a tough 11-2 season in 2019. Of course, you go back to that. Um, you know, let's take a look back at that. Going into 2019, they come off uh, one of the most embarrassing games. Actually, it's not even close. Probably the most embarrassing game um, Alabama fans have ever witnessed. The worst loss in the Nick Saban era. Um, you know, you you get blown out 44 to 16 against the Clemson Tigers. Um, you know, a chance to go undefeated. For the first time in nine years since 2009. Um, and, you know, of course, everyone was looking at it after the loss. Everyone was saying, you know, the stuff they typically say after a Bama loss. The dynasty's dead or it's fall, falling apart or whatever. So, going into last year, 2019, Alabama, they were still one of the favorites to make the playoff. To potentially win a title, but they were not the favorite. That went to the Clemson Tigers. Of course, uh, deserve for Deservably so. Um, Alabama ended up going 10 and 2. Uh, hoping for a redemption season, didn't get it. Uh, both of those losses came uh, at home against LSU, who went on to win the um, championship last year, of course, over Clemson. And I guess what you could call a blowout. Um, uh, Bama lost that game 46-41. They lost the Iron Bowl at Jordan Hare against Auburn, 48-45, due to a missed field goal. Uh, just absolute embarrassment on the defensive side. So when you look at Alabama, and and you know you want to go to the bowl game that they just won on New Year's Day in January. Um, they played the Michigan Wolverines in the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. They won that 35 to 16. Uh, and when you look at that bowl game that they just had, what you notice, and, and I don't know about you guys, but I think the first thing, let me plug my phone in, let me plug my phone in, that sticks out to me is the defense. The defense struggled last year, right? Yes, they had some games where they only gave up seven points, or, oh, they only gave up three points. But against the games that matter most, the opponents that mattered most, for, like, LSU and Auburn, I mean, you gave up 40-plus points. And last year, Alabama just could not get it together on defense. Um, which, Nick Saban is so known for having good defense, right? He He's known for being a defensive guru. And we did not see that whatsoever last year. Right? Against good competition, that is. Um, so, I think going into 2020, when you look at Alabama, two things that stick out to me the most is, one, um, first off, who's going to get the nod at quarterback? Um, you look at that, Mac Jones is returning for his, I think, junior year. Uh, he's a red shirt, though. Um and you pick up a very high recruit in Bryce Young, probably the best to ever come out of high school. We will see how that works out this year or whenever he gets his opportunity for the Tide. Uh, I think the big question is who's going to start at quarterback. Uh, in my opinion, I would expect Mac Jones to maybe start the first two or three games. Um, and maybe by within like a month or so, we have an actual starter for the rest of the way. So, um, with that being said, we will see what happens. Um, Saturday, April 18th, uh, coming up in a little over a month, um, the Alabama spring game. Uh, definitely going to want to watch the quarterbacks there. Watch how the defense is, too. Uh, will they get better this year? I think a lot of people expect them to uh, improve. So, um, that. Uh, quarterback play and defensive side of the ball. Um, again, I, and I posted a video about this. You have Pete Golding, the defensive coordinator, and uh, 
uh, Coach Sarkeesian, uh, Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator, both are returning. And this is a first for Alabama for the first time in a few years where they have not had to deal with um, coaching turnover. So I think that's a huge deal for Alabama this year. We will see how that works out. That being said, let's go ahead and get into the 2020 uh, season. Week one, you open up neutral site game. The um, what is that? The the, the Advocare Classic or whatever. The one in Dallas, Texas, or Arlington, really, but it's where the Cowboys play. Um, you open up against USC in the non-con uh, against the Pac-12 team. Uh, I believe they played them a couple years ago whenever Jalen was a freshman. Jalen Hurts was a freshman at Alabama. They opened the season with him, uh, with um, USC. And we're, we're in kind of a situation um, – oh, let me plug my computer in. We're, we're kind of in a situation like we were a few years ago when we opened with USC um, in 2016 because you had just come off a championship run. That's the only difference in this matchup. Uh, you play a pretty good team from the Pac-12. You can say whatever you want about Clay Helton and USC. Yeah, it's pro pretty much been in the dumps the past few years, but... Overall, it's a pretty good football program and a well-known football program at that. Um, <laughs> we didn't know who the quarterback was going to be at Alabama a few years ago when Jalen uh, started. At least he, he started uh, by week two. We had an actual starter. Um, but anyway, so that's something to, to look out for there. Who's going to start that game? You look at Bryce Young, who people are expecting to at least start – some point this season and possibly steal the job for Mac Jones. That's going to be a big deal. Um, possibly by week three or four, we will know. Uh, speaking of, I'm going to go ahead and get back into the schedule. Um, again, we open up with USC. Uh, then uh, another non-conference game, Georgia State, um, who went 2-10 two, two years ago. And, of course, we know what happened with them last year, week one. Um, sorry to bring that up, Vols fans. but uh, <laughs> So, open with USC, week two, September 12th, home game against Georgia State. Next week, the Dogs of Athens from Georgia are coming to Tuscaloosa. That's going to be a very interesting matchup. That is where Alabama is put to the test. Georgia uh, just signed the number one recruiting class. Going to be a great team to watch next year. Um, uh, still uncertain about that quarterback's, uh, situation as well. Alabama's not the only team looking to see a quarterback competition this spring and in the summer and everything. Um, Georgia has one too with Dwan Mathis, Jamie Newman, and that, um, who's that new kid? Carson Beck, I think. So when you look at that, open with USC, home against Georgia State, uh, those two games should be no problem. We'll see how USC looks this year. Georgia, that's going to be a very early test for Alabama. This one at home, you can say whatever you want. Um, oh, it's at Bryant-Denny, no problem. Well, they had LSU at Bryant-Denny last year, and it didn't turn out so good. Then again, I don't think Georgia this year, I think they will be a great uh, team this year and um, for the first time in a couple years be a playoff contender but I don't think they will be as um, elite as last year's LSU team I'm not doubting it uh, necessarily just in my opinion right now I don't think it will be that kind of a team but we will see what happens next week Kent State um Saban's alma mater comes to Tuscaloosa, so you open up with three straight home games after the USC game. Uh, Georgia State, Georgia, and Kent State. Then you go on the road at Ole Miss. Um, that's going to be very interesting. We'll see how Lane Kiffin can do in his first year. I think a lot of people are expecting him to do pretty well um, with these new coaches in Mississippi. Lane Kiffin... 
uh, in uh, Oxford. Um, and, of course, Mississippi State has Mike Leach in, um, what's it called, Starks, Starksville. Um, at Ole Miss, October 3rd. Normally, we would play Ole Miss, I think, sometime in September. Uh, but we have a couple cupcakes. Um, then you're on the road uh, two weeks in a row um, at Arkansas. Uh, bring it back to Bryant-Denny with Mississippi State. On the road for the third Saturday in October, Tennessee, um, which I'll get into them in another preview video. Talk a little bit more about them. I think Tennessee is going to be a team to watch out for. I'm not going to sit here and say they're making a New Year's Six Bowl or winning the East or anything, but I think this is a team that can learn from the mistakes they made last year, losing their first two games to non-conference FCS high school type teams. You know, let's just be real, call it what it is. Um, they really look good late in the year, I think. Uh, and, and I felt like there was a moment for Tennessee last year where they improved and got a little better. We'll see what year, was it year three for uh, Jeremy Pruitt? Uh, we'll see how it looks like uh, going into 2020 for the Vols in a different video. So, um, let's see. USC, Georgia State, home against Georgia. Kent State at Ole Miss at Arkansas, home against Mississippi State, who you normally play in November. Um, this this year's schedule is a little off. Um, so Mississippi State at Tennessee, then a bye week on October 31st, Halloween, Nick Saban's birthday. Let him get a, uh, a Saturday off for his birthday. Let him celebrate, all that good stuff, you know, get ready. For a big game the following week at LSU, the defending champs. Listen, you can say whatever you want about LSU. I think they're going to do great. Um, but, you know, then again, you look at LSU who lost Steve Vinsminger, or um, uh, they might not have lost him, but I know they lost Joe Brady and I think Dave Aranda, uh, those two guys who are, have gone pro. One of those um, to the Panthers and the other. Um, I think took actually took the head coaching job at Baylor. Um, I'm not exactly sure who took uh, which job, but someone let me know down below. Um, at LSU, UT Martin on November 14th, uh, non-con cupcake home game, right? The week after you get A&M, you normally get them sometime in September or October. Um, you know, I mentioned when... Um, you you have uh, Mississippi State and you have the Kent State game. Um, normally, where the Kent State game is, that seems about normal for a cupcake. I think for the Mississippi State game, though, that is normally where uh, you would they would play A uh, and M, and Mississippi State would come two weeks before the Iron Bowl. And a team like UT Martin is normally before the Iron Bowl. They normally get a cupcake. Um, but they get A&M before the Iron Bowl, and of course the Iron Bowl itself, November 28th. Last year's Iron Bowl was not that great. It was a good game to watch. It was probably, and I'm going to be honest, I thought it was the best Iron Bowl I've seen in a while. Um, it was very, a very great game, back and forth. Yes, Alabama made mistakes. Yes, Alabama lost. But that's what you want to see in a rivalry like the Iron Bowl, which is the biggest in football. You want a back and forth shootout. You want to see great offense. Um, yes, you want to see great defense as well. Um, but at the same time, you, uh, I mean, you just, you want to see domination, right? You, you want to see a, a good defensive game, but at the same time, for a game like the Iron Bowl, don't you just want a great shootout? coming down to the wire or something, right? That's what we saw last year. I don't know how I feel about it. I think Alabama would definitely win this Iron Bowl. Listen, it's been a while since Alabama has lost to Auburn two times in a row. It's been, it, This year makes uh, 10 years 
since the last time Auburn won at Bryant Denny, going back to when Cam Newton brought him back in 2010. Um, so, and then of course the following week, if all goes according to plan, and Alabama can win the West, they have the SEC championship game the following week. So, looking at the schedule, I I don't know. I see two games they could potentially lose, but. Nick Saban in Alabama, I'm just going to say this. I think Nick Saban in Alabama are going to be mad in 2020. And I'm not saying that because, you know, uh, the schedule or anything. I'm saying that because the past two years, they have not gotten where they want to be, and that's on top of college football. So when you look at it like that, they're going to be furious. And the defense has just been in the dumps the past couple years, and you know Nick Saban's going to get on it. Listen, yes, they played a lot of young players. You can blame Pete Golding if you want to. I'm not 100% on board with him coming back. But at the same time, who knows what it would look like if, if Saban went out and got someone else. And when you look at how they played on de defensively against Michigan in that Citrus Bowl, it was uh, it was incredible. They only gave up 16 points. That's what you want to see from a Nick Saban defense. You can say whatever you want about Michigan's offense in that game. I don't care. The fact of the matter is they only gave up 16 in the final game of the year. It kind of looked like a turning point for the defense. Um so they're gonna be they're gonna be mad next year, um, <clears throat> in 2020 because it did not go the way they wanted it to, whatsoever. Especially on the defensive side of the ball, offense terrific, like it's been the past few years, right? But the defense is has just not been a Nick Saban defense in a long time, um, or I don't want to say a long time, but in a couple years. So, um. And, of course, after the Iron Bowl, again, SEC championship game, uh, I would expect them to win the West. I would expect, looking at this, I'm seeing a 11-1 or a 12-0 record. I don't see them losing at LSU. I'm not taking anything away from LSU. I think they're going to be a good team. Uh, but they lose quite so much and when you have to replace your defense and offensive coordinators you have to replace a Heisman winning quarterback you got to replace some defense you got it, it, I mean it is tough to I, I don't see LSU being as good as they were last year knowing what all they have to replace but we will see you never know a lot can happen over the summer, a lot can happen in the fall, and a lot can happen in college football in general. So I'm looking at a 11-1, 12-0 record. If anything, maybe Georgia trips up Alabama at Bryant-Denny. Now, Alabama owns Georgia. Yes, I know, it's only been two meetings, but let's be honest. Uh, when you look at just the, the talk of Nick Saban and Kirby Smart, if anyone's going to be the first assistant to beat Nick Saban, it's Kirby Smart, but he hasn't done it yet. He's almost done it. But, you know, when you look at recruiting, yes, I know, they signed the number one class this year. But, I don't know. There, There's just... He's so close, but yet he falls so short to beating Nick Saban. Could this be the year? I think so. But at the same time, if this if this game were in Athens, I'd be saying something different. I would totally give it to Georgia. But it's at Bryant-Denny, and it's very... Listen, it's going to be early in the season, not late. You don't have a whole lot to prepare for. I get you have the whole off season, but when you're seeing that it's a week three matchup, I mean, you got to be quick about trying to game plan, you know, if you were to start at the beginning of the season. But anyway, so looking at an 11-1 or 12-0 record for Alabama, I don't think they lose two games. 
Uh, the two games that I think they could lose, and again, I'm not doubting Georgia. I think they could beat us. I don't see it happening. Um, and I don't see us losing at LSU with everything LSU has lost. So, as of right now, I have them 12-0. and Something could change, but for this prediction video, Alabama goes 12-0, and makes the SEC championship game. Um, and so, we will see what happens with that. Um, so anyway, again, you're not going to lose to Georgia State. You probably will beat USC. Um, Auburn, you're not losing to them at Bryant Denny. Probably not going to lose to the Aggies. Definitely not losing to the Volunteers. First off, if we, if Alabama owns anybody in football, it's the Volunteers. Now, I'm subscribed to quite a few, I say quite a few, maybe like two, three people that are Vols fans. Shout out to Volunteer Roadshow and BVD. Go check them out. I got nothing but respect for Tennessee. Nothing but respect. I get it's a rivalry, but nothing but respect. I have no hatred, but let's just state the facts. Alabama is the daddy of Tennessee football. Tennessee has not beaten Nick Saban. Nick Saban has never lost to the Volunteers in his tenure. I don't think they've beaten us since 05. Right? They've come close. But Alabama just always finds a way to win in, on the third Saturday. Or again, in this case, the fourth Saturday. Which, here's the thing. Listen. I, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Why on earth? Is this a typo? Why on earth is Mississippi State on the third Saturday of October? It is literally in the name of this rivalry the third Saturday in October. And we're playing it on the fourth Saturday in October. There are five of them. The fifth being Halloween. Right? Look at, look at the October schedule. October 3rd at Ole Miss. October 10th. At Arkansas, 17th, after the Ole Miss game, should be Tennessee. Or, I'm sorry, after the Arkansas game. It should be Tennessee, but it's Mississippi State. So when you look at it like that, that's what screwed up. Makes no sense. Anyway, I'm seeing an 11-1 or 12-0 record. Thank you. For Alabama this year. Uh, hit the like, hit the subscribe, comment. All that good stuff. Let me know what your thoughts are, Alabama fans. Uh, any other fans out there, tell me why I'm wrong. So, anyway. That's it for this video. Like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. And I will see you guys next time. Until then, Ballard Sports Media, checking out.